Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC and do everything DIY. Today working on a rooftop chiller. One compressor never stops running. And let's see what's going on. Alright, so we found this contactor. Just plunged in. Looks like a bad contactor. Got my meter to volts. And I'm gonna check back here. See if our coil is energized. It is not. So this contactor should not be plunging in. This is a bad contactor. It needs to be replaced. Safety is always first. Always make sure that your power is off before attempting to replace your contactor. And always double check your coil to make sure you're not getting voltage from a separate source. A Mars 780 61446 in my truck. This is a three phase contactor with a 110 volt coil and it's good for 40 amps. So I'm going to start by disconnecting this one, transferring over the wires onto the new one, and let's get this going. Contactor has two auxiliary switches on the side one here and one here. So we're going to pull this tab to the side and pull it towards us right there. This one is free. Push that tab to the side, push out, and now our contactor is free. This contactor is the lug type. I like those, so you could just unscrew this portion. Stick your wire in, screw it down, and you're ready to go. So I'm just gonna prep these. So we can attach our new wires. One side of your contactor is gonna be your line side, which let's say is this side, three wires, there's the three phases. And on the opposite end, it's our load side, which when this plunger plunges down, it's gonna send power from line to your load. So this is our load side. And right here, three wires for our three phases. And back here, labeled A1 and A2, this is our coil. Our coil is 110 volts. These are labeled one, two, and three. And I can see this was changed previously because somebody made a little marking. One, two, three. So we're just gonna disconnect that. And as far as the coil, I'm just gonna make sure that the single wire is on the right side and the double wire is on the left. And uh, I'm gonna snap these two back on and we're good to go. to do is to take off one wire and connect it so go wire for wire and you can't go wrong contactor facing up the coil is in the back except with this sticker facing backwards the coil is in the back so we're gonna put it in reverse and always pay attention and these are all flattened out what I like to do is take my linesman twist them back together They can easily fit into the slot. So coils up here, so this is number one. Stick it in and tighten it down. load side is connected now we can add to connect our three line wires and our coil okay, so this is labeled as one two and three then we have our coil I hope you guys can see it these two white wires go on one side of the coil This goes on the opposite side. So now we're out. I'm gonna mount my new coil. 
my new contactor, excuse me. And I have one screw on the bottom. All right, we're mounted. I'm gonna connect my coil, one side of the coil. Hope you guys can see that. And here's my opposite side. A needle nose pliers would be great for the situation, but eh, it's all right. So I'm gonna straighten out these conductors. Push it in, tighten down on the lug. Snug final spin, make sure it's nice and tight. And now we have these auxiliary switches, there's little pin clips in the back. We start by sliding those in. Right there, then it locks into place. Do the same for the opposite end. Right there. That's how you change the contact. It's super simple. See this one stuck pushed in. And yeah, it's a close up look of that connection on the side. It's basically what it is. So when your contactor closes, it's gonna close this little red switch and you have a set of normally open and normally closed contacts here use it for whatever you would like all right so that contactor is gone and it's replaced with a new one that was pretty much it anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe catch you all next time